Hello. Just let me check. Ah, oh, okay, we go. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for the nice presentation, uh, Alexander. You mentioned during your, um, your presentation that the institutions are coming, but I have to correct you. Some institutions are already in the space. Um, maybe not as huge as, um, as like some of the big startups in the space, but uh, we are also trying to, um, to come by here at T-Systems uh, Deutsche Telekom. But uh, let, me, let me start off with some um, brief history lesson. Um, so uh, at Deutsche Telekom, we are an infrastructure provider at heart. What does this mean? So um, back in the days when the whole uh, mobile was starting, we were the ones that uh, dug the holes for the telephone cables. We set up the, um, the, the towers, the mobile towers that people uh, today use for their um, phone connections. Um, and we, we also supported basically through, um, through satellites and and these things to further onboard the, the mobile adoption within Germany, but also Europe and globally uh, afterwards. Then uh, what came next? Um, next came the internet. Um, this is a working progress. We are aware of that, but uh, like mostly everything in, in Germany is already covered from the internet side. So we also dug up a lot of holes there, put a lot of cables into the ground and um, set up the whole infrastructure for the, for the internet through servers, cables, and um, yeah, basically becoming the, the backbone of, of European infrastructure in this regard. But then at some point, you also need to, to think from, from telco perspective, where do you position yourself um, in the future? Like what is the back, best, uh, the next big thing? And, what we are currently doing at uh, T-Systems, we are heavily investigating Web3 and already participating to some extent. And this is what I'm trying to, to share here with this talk today. So we are right now um, mainly operating um, as, as node operator within the space on public not, uh, blockchain networks. But uh, we're also to some extent um, uh, working within the whole uh, Oracle space. But um, let me continue. So basically our main business, what we try to do as a telco is um, we, we validate transactions uh, on public blockchain networks. So um, in order for networks to be decentralized, there need, uh, there need to be multiple node operators within the space. And we intend to be, to be one of them. Um, through our, like, our expertise that we have gathered uh, through the years from infrastructure side, um, we are also able to provide the service in a, in a quite uh, robust manner in order to like, constantly be running and also constantly be supporting these, uh, these pu public blockchain networks. But how do we actually, um, with our small team that we are currently um, uh, are managing to make a business out of this? So, um, or who are our, our customers in other words? So let me, let me t make a brief introduction there. Uh, we, we are currently live on, on three networks. Uh, so it's Silo, Polkadot and Flow. And right now we have two major customers. Uh, on the one hand, those are the, the blockchain foundations, which, um, which have a huge interest in decentralizing their blockchain networks. For instance, with Flow, uh, there we work uh, very actively with Dapper Labs, but also um, on Polkadot, there we, uh, we work very actively with the, with the Web3 Foundation, who, um, who enable us to uh, get into the active set of those networks and um, validate transactions which are uh, happening on these blockchain networks. Um, what we basically uh, add to the, the node operator service is since, since like, like we are, <laughs> you, could, you could call us the Uber decentralization uh, node operator, since not only the servers that we are running 
uh, uh, like on, on, on complete Deutsche Telekom infrastructure through the open telecom cloud, but also all the cables and the whole ecosystem is, uh, is also from, from Deutsche Telekom. So from, from a uh, decentralization uh, point of view, it's actually quite a benefit to also have like a huge and slow player like, like Deutsche Telekom within the network. But um, yeah, it's also um, yeah, a little bit uh, yeah, uh, supportive of the whole decentralization of the space. And then like another um, customer group that we have, which is, uh, might also sound crazy from, from Telco perspective, are venture capital funds. So for our operations on Silo, for instance, we actively work with, with Andreessen Horowitz, who delegates tokens to our, our nodes and enables us to also uh, validate uh, transactions on, on the Silo network. And then we also actively are working with the, um, with the DTCP, which is the venture capital arm of Deutsche Telekom. And yes, but uh, let's see what's next. There are some, some problems with staking as it is right now from, from the user perspective. So um, for one, you have uh, on many networks, of course it's network dependent, a uh, certain lockup period. Which is not very user friendly. So if you if you stake your crypto, which some with like some node operators or even several node operators, you cannot withdraw your your crypto immediately. Oftentimes you are in some kind of locking period where you uh, cannot access your funds until they are withdrawn. Another huge problem is minimum stake. If we look, for instance look at at the Polkadot e ecosystem. There you, like in order to set up a node, you already need multiple millions in Euro uh, and in, in DOT tokens to, uh, to participate as a node operator and earn rewards. Um, or on uh, Ethereum, there it's like this, this uh, 32 ETH um, cap, which uh, hinders many people to also set up their own node which is kind of uh, not very yeah, like user friendly and also hinders some, some adoption. Then, um, yeah, and then lastly, um, yeah, the technical knowledge that is required to also set up nodes. And it's since the, the tokens are locked, um, you cannot participate in all the, the fun DeFi activities uh, and uh, also earn the, the interest there. And then you also have this this uh, problem where you on the one hand have, have staking rewards with a certain, um, which enable you to acquire a certain amount of APR. But on the other hand, you have the, the DeFi space where you also have this, um, this uh, certain amount of APR, which oftentimes also is, is higher than the staking rewards, um, particularly in, in DeFi summer, but right now it's calming down a little bit, which is not, not that bad of a thing. But it's, uh, so there's this kind of competition between DeFi and, and the staking space. And uh, one solution that we, uh, we, we are seeing right now is the whole um, liquid staking industry. So uh, with liquid staking, there you, like the users uh, can, can stake their, their tokens with a decentralized protocol. And as a result, receive a, like, a copy of their tokens, which then can be used in, in other DeFi uh, protocols, and also uh, still continue to be to be yield bearing. So basically, you you continue to earn interest with your stake token, but also you can use it in multiple DeFi uh, applications and do all the fancy stuff. Um, yeah, the the liquid staking industry is uh, growing quite well. Um, th this graph only shows until November. I think if you if it's up to date, it's a little bit a uh, little bit lower again because the price has dropped. But in general, um, the adoption is quite high and the interest as well. And we also, uh, since we we are quite um, uh, supportive of the space and think it's also um, quite promising with regards to the future. Also from institutional liquid staking perspective. We, we are currently um, actively in the onboarding process with Stakewise, which is an Ethereum-based liquid staking protocol, but we're also in, in active talks with, with other um, liquid staking protocols. Um, so how it works basically um, behind these liquid staking protocols, which enable e uh, yield-bearing um, interest, 
uh, no, no, <laughs> yield bearing uh, tokens. Um, there are uh, several node operators, and then one of them would be or is uh, Deutsche Telekom T Systems. And then again, um, if you think about it, I mean, there I have this 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 nice picture. They're made in Germany. But uh, if you think a little bit further, it's made by Germany even. I mean, um, Germany, uh, like T-Systems, is a daughter company of Deutsche Telekom. Deutsche Telekom is, uh, has Germany as a major shareholder. So 30% of, of uh, Deutsche Telekom is owned by Germany. So in other words, uh, Germany is becoming uh, also like a node operator in, in liquid uh, staking protocols, which is a crazy thing if you think about it. Um, and also, since many people are talking about uh, El Salvador and their Bitcoin adoption, Germany isn't that far uh, behind. We are also actively uh, looking in the space. But yeah, this is just a, a fun uh, side fact. But then, like for instance, to g give some examples, what you can do with your, your staked uh, ETH tokens. You could, for instance, use them at, as collateral at other and borrow some, some more um, ETH <laughs> against it and get some, some leveraged positions out of it in order, in order to to maximize uh, your yield, yield earning. Of course, there are some risks, and you should um, uh, try to not uh, be under collateralized. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, these are some things that you can do. But, and also, of course, you always have the, the opportunity to, to trade your tokens and always exit your positions on, um, on uh, automated market makers, such as Uniswap or SushiSwap. But then again, uh, the liquidity question is also something that uh, needs to be thought about. All right. Um, but then with the whole DeFi space being so uh, interesting, also oracles come, come into play. The whole um, invisible uh, backbone of the, the DeFi uh, ecosystem and stuff, where we are also um, trying to support a little bit. Since two years, we are actively supporting Chainlink as a, as a node operator. So we, we, what we do in a nutshell is we provide uh, data feeds to all these DeFi applications and try to support there. Um, and how this looks is um, we, are, we are doing this mainly on Ethereum right now, which is, which is also a very, uh, like, <laughs> if you, um, we, we are also struggling there a little bit. For instance, like the, the gas fees, they are a problem. Um, uh, at, some t uh, at some times, um, when, when the, the gas fees on Ethereum are, are very big and we need to do transactions which put the data on the blockchain, we uh, sometimes have to call, do some calls to the finance team and tell them, yeah, we need to buy 200,000 euro of ETH because we can't do our transactions uh, anymore on, uh, for the, the chain link node operator service. And you also get some, some weird looks. But this, these are some kind of struggles that we, we go through sometimes uh, here um, at, the, yeah, at the big companies. But it, uh, it works out in the end most of the time. Um, and then from, from Oracle perspective, of course, we, we are not only looking onto Ethereum, which we are now doing, but also on some um, other EVM compatible sidechains. For instance, like Moonbeam is quite interesting since we are already uh, supporting Polkadot from node operator perspective, um, since it's EVM compatible and kind of fits into the story. Um, but then, of course, we, we are very open to, to also supporting other um, Oracle providers and or networks. Yeah, so uh, then I also give a little bit of an um, uh, input into our uh, strategy from a holistic uh, point of view. This is the, um, the holy triangle of public blockchain uh, infrastructure support, which an ex-colleague of mine introduced. He's actually here as well, Daniel Schwader over there. <laughs> but um, what we do is... Uh, <laughs> Um, so, so like with, with networks in the beginning, they are like it's comparable to a startup, right? They need some funding. Um, in the like traditional sense, you have uh, equity investments through startups and uh, no, through through venture capital funds, private equity firms, or on the stock market, you can um, trade securities. But then the whole crypto space uh, opens up this this. Uh, this ability to a whole lot of uh, other players and people. For instance, 
um, yeah, your family, but also for, for instance, Deutsche Telekom, who can also then do uh, uh, easily do some investment into, into blockchain networks or even decentralized protocols and support there. Then, um, of course, uh, once you have these, these networks um, built or the, the main um, framework being built, there needs to be some infrastructure which is uh, then also provided by, by players like us. Of course, in the beginning, there are not that many um, transactions that can be validated, but um, this is uh, like you need to have the infrastructure running first in order for use cases to, to build upon it. And this is also then, then the last piece, the use case, which uh, hopefully um, brings some adoption to, to blockchain networks, where we are also currently um, building out some, um, some marketplaces and also looking into other directions with regards to remittances and trying to figure out how we can bring um, blockchain-based use cases also to our, our customers at Deutsche Telekom. Yeah, but, but things are, are evolving uh, slow and steady. So <laughs> we are a big company, so there are some processes involved, but I think there will be some news which uh, come out quite quite soon. Um, and then, um, yeah, lastly, maybe to give like a little bit of an um, insight into all the challenges that we have here. Um, regulation is a very big part since it's um, quite uncertain with, I mean, with discussions like uh, Bitcoin mining being forbidden on, on your like EU uh, servers, um, uh, it also becomes a little bit uncertain how, how long it will take until EU regulators, for instance, say you can't do staking anymore on, um, on EU uh, ground. And then we have some, some problems because we build a business around this. So we kind of uh, need to also uh, play around these, uh, these major um, uncertainties by setting up infrastructure in Switzerland, like neutral countries, um, so we are not... Uh, so dependent on, um, or not so uncertain of uh, re re legislative uh, changes. But then, um, like I think this, this issue, I have communicated it now, uh, like sometimes, it's a super uh, innovative and quickly moving industry, and we are a super conservative, slow company. So um, trying to, to um, stay at speed and also um, stay up to date and stay relevant is not always easy um, because there are so many processes from buying to compliance and from legal, whatnot. <laughs> but uh, of course, uh, it's a challenge that we are willing to, to take. And then um, another thing, like for instance, like with the Terra new, like the, the stablecoin news uh, from Terra, and uh, also with, with a lot of exploits and hacks. There's always uh, like uh, some kind of um, uncertainty with regards to the confidence that the customers have. And then uh, this is also where we see as like a big company, uh, it is important that, that, that also there's adoption from, from bigger companies to kind of signal that, that the space is being like, it is quite early, but there are also um, yeah, bigger companies to, that trust into this space and support it and continue building with it. And yeah, that's, that's what we try to do. And I hope this also opened your eyes that there are not only fancy startups in the space, but also some really conservative, big, uh, slow companies that try to, uh, <laughs> to uh, follow you. All right, uh, but that's uh, basically it. Thank you very much for, for listening.